Welcome to Air Academy Associates series on using SPC Excel. This video clip is entitled PFCE CNX SOP, which is certainly a mouthful and it may seem a bit strange at first if you've not seen this before. So what I'd like to do today is show you what each of these four tools is and how they link together. Working together, they form what we call the first line of defense against variation. If used properly and consistently, they combine to reduce the cost of waste and the cost of poor quality. After briefly discussing how these tools fit together, uh, I will then go to SPC Excel and show you where you can access uh, these tools. Actually, PFCE CNX SOP can be considered a rapid improvement event that managers can use to reduce variation, remove waste, and reduce cycle time. The first of these four tools is a process flow diagram. And a process flow diagram, or some people call it process map, is a graphical tool that describes the sequence or the flow and the order of all of the major steps in a process, including the decision points. It improves understanding the process as a whole. It can help us determine bottlenecks. It can facilitate the identification of other problem areas and any sources of variation that are creeping into our process. Actually, we can use uh, basically four symbols to get a decent process flow diagram. Uh, the ovals typically specify the start and stopping points a uh, rectangle typically looks at a step in the process, and then we have a diamond-shaped box that is a branching point or a decision point in the flow. And of course, we use arrows to indicate the direction of flow, and we can end up having loops, uh, which tend to uh, indicate rework. Uh, but uh, the process flow diagram is a very easy uh, tool to use. And we'll show you uh, in SPC Excel where you can gain access to the process flow tools. The second tool shown here is the cause and effect diagram, also known as a fishbone diagram or an Ishikawa diagram. No doubt you have done one of these before. We call it customer driven because we always not want to know who the customer is, what the customer needs or wants, and how do we get that. So in a cause and effect diagram, we indicate the head of the fish as the problem or the response variable. And then in the backbone of the fish, we enter the variables or factors or the potential uh, causes of the response variable or problem. Now, what CN and X does for us is that for every entry we make into the backbone of the fish, we label it with either a C, an N, or an X. If it's labeled with a C, it indicates to us that that variable or factor is being controlled or being held as constant as possible. Uh, if it has an N variable or an N annotated to it, we call it a noise variable or a noise factor. Noise does not mean sound in a sense, but noise is another word for variation. It means that that variable is fairly variable. It is changing. It is noisy, as we so to speak. Uh, and then those Variables that have an X associated with it are also controlled variables, but they are controlled or being controlled at different set points or different settings for us to be able to determine what impact they have on the problem or the response variable. So we are purposely changing the X variables, which we call then experimenting with them, or we call them experimental variables. So this whole CNX thing is designed to allow us to look at what's, what variation are we controlling, which ones we are not. Variation is a strange beast because variation is additive. Variation in one step of the process does not cancel out variation in another step of the process. It's completely additive. So variation in the backbone of the fish acts as tributaries to water. It's like water being you know, uh, accumulated down here. Let's say this major axis is the Mississippi River and down here is where the Mississippi drops into the Gulf of Mexico. You're gonna see a lot more water down here, or variation if we might call it that, 
in the, the Gulf of Mexico or the Mississippi drops into it than you will up here in upper state uh, Minnesota where Lake Itasca is the headwaters for the Mississippi. But we have rivers like the North Platte and the Missouri that are contributing to water. And variation behaves very, very much like that. And in order to prevent the variation for escape from escaping down here to the head of the fishbone, we got to dam it up. So how do we do that? We change N's into C's. C means we control that variation. It is not escaping down here in getting to our response variable. Well, how do we do that? We change N's to C's by way of standard operating procedures. SOPs you've no doubt heard about before. Uh, a standard operating procedure defines the interaction of people with their environment. It details the action and the work sequence. It provides a routine to achieve consistency. Consistency means the lack of variability. It provides a basis for future improvements, and it can validate the mistake proofing that we use within our SOPs. So what I'd like to do now is go to the software and show you where you gain access to these tools. We are now in the SPC Excel software where this is the main menu for SPC Excel up here, and all of the tools we just talked about are accessible by way of this problem ID or a problem identification tools where you see the flow charting tool, uh, the template for PFC, CNX, and then generating the fishbone diagram itself. Let's take a look and the order in which we do this is important. We usually flow the process first, so let's look at the flow charting uh, capability in SPC Excel. The flow charting capability in SPC Excel is integrated into the add-ins of Microsoft Excel. So if you click on add-ins, you'll come over here to the upper left portion of your screen and you'll see different uh, flow diagram tools like this one here is the, um, uh, the start, an oval, which is a start and a stop process. And you can uh, click on that and you can annotate in here start. Uh, you can come up here and get uh, other tools like the a uh, flow di or a, a rectangle. Let's say the next step, step one in here is a, uh, a rectangle, okay? You have that and you can come up here again and take a look at say a diamond shaped box which might be something like this where this is a decision point where you can uh, annotate and put anything you want in here. Now if you want a lot, and then of course we can put the flow diagram, we can put arrows in here that indicate flow, uh, okay, like this. Uh, and, uh, oops, I guess I missed that one. So let me go up here again and get uh, uh, a, uh, an arrow over here. And of course we can move this guy up and down however we want. We need a, maybe another arrow uh, from here over to the uh, decision point and you can uh, move these guys up or down however you want, get the arrows parallel. And so you get the idea here of the flow diagram. Now, uh, it, it went away right now, but if you go to add-ins and you click on one of these boxes you've already made, you should be able to get what we call uh, another box here if you want. You can put that in and then if you put something new in there, look at all the different tools you have or graphical symbols you have that you can use. There's more here uh, than you can possibly use, but the way you get that is click on add-ins and then put a symbol in there or a graphical tool, and this will open up uh, this uh, magnitude, expand the magnitude of the graphical symbols that you might be able to use. But that's process flow, and again, it's accessible by way of the add-ins. Now, if you have opened up Microsoft Excel and you don't see add-ins here, you should right-click on your ribbon and go to customize the ribbon and come down here to look at add-ins right here. See, this is where you add in the, uh, or display the add-ins in your ribbon. Uh, I'm going to unclick that and just say OK, and guess what? Add-ins went away up here but I'm going to right click again and come up here to customize because I want those add-ins in there so I'm going to click on that and say OK and now it has reappeared and that's where uh, this is the, the avenue by which you get all of these symbols and you can customize this as you well know to your to your liking. 
So let's go to um, uh, Sigma Zone and show you then the process flow, I should say the CNX. The CNX is by way of a template. The way you get the fishbone diagram is by way of this template. So let's set uh, in the, the six major breakpoints of the fishbone shown here, measurement method machine, they're the six M's, and it's a memory jogger, a mnemonic. You can change these things any way you want. You can customize this to say, I don't want manpower, I want people. I don't want environment, I want mother nature. So you can customize this any way you want. And then you input the variables or the factors, like in their particular category, like measurement. You might say spot the ball if we are in a um, catapult uh, type of environment. And we say, oh, that was pretty noisy. We did not control spotting. We didn't really have a spotting technique that we ha had good spots. The method, maybe we have uh, the pull angle that we are using. And uh, maybe we did control that one. Maybe we put a hard stop back there for the pull angle. Uh, machine variable, maybe we have stable base. Maybe we don't have a stable base. Maybe it is pretty noisy. So you annotate the C's and the N's and the X's by way of this template. And when you are finished, you can come up here and get the fishbone diagram. But you will have to create this template first. Now, once you've got the fishbone, like over here, you can come in here and change these things the way you'd like. Now, here's your linkage to SOPs. If you want to create SOPs in a Word document, you will come over here and say yes. Let's do that for a second and just show you what comes up. A Word document comes up where you have a separate page for each of these variables like the machine variable, stable base, it's kind of noisy right now. And if you wanted to change that to a constant, okay, you could come in here and uh, say, okay, this is the SOP we're going to use for that. And that is we're going to use duct tape or whatever and clamps. And you could make that much more specific by saying, where do you put the duct tape? Where do you put the clamps? Now up here, this pull angle was constant, so it's saying enter your SOP right here, and we will say the pullback angle uses a wood block uh, to uh, have a hard stop at the angle of use, or something like that. But anyway, you get the idea here where you can view multiple pages simultaneously in the um, uh, in the Word document, and you can see where your SOPs are missing, uh, where the SOPs are needed, and that's your linkage back to the uh, fishbone diagram. So uh, basically, let's get out of the Word document, go back to the, uh, the diagram, and here again, you can uh, customize, you can take some of these guys out. I'm just going to say there's a lot of arrows in there. Your fishbone diagram at first might not be uh, populated so well. Uh, or so uh, frequently, and you may want to customize this however you want. So that is the CNX. Uh, again, where you get those tools are right up here. The flowcharting tool are integrated with the add-ins uh, of Microsoft Excel. Uh, if you come up here to uh, uh, the uh, fishbone diagram uh, to uh, right here, to get the fishbone, you need to uh, do this. You need to get the template first. So. Those are the areas that we uh, basically talked about uh, as far as where you access these. Uh, let me just finish up and summarize PFC CNX SOP as a very powerful method uh, to turn an art into a science. The process flow and cause and effect diagrams are in fact living documents. They will change over time. What an N variable is today could be a C variable tomorrow. What a C variable is today could be an experimental variable that we're actually changing tomorrow. The SOPs are the way to change noise variables into C variables, and that will uh, also mandate the use of mistake proofing within our standard operating procedures. If you've never experienced the uh, power of PFC CNX SOP, I would encourage you to do that through a simulation we do in some of our classes by way of the Statapult or the Statapot. 
And those of you who have used the power of PFC, CNX, SOP in your own organizations uh, to, uh, to accomplish rapid improvement events, you know what the power of, that, uh, of this particular rapid improvement event is. So thank you very much for uh, joining me in this uh, short video clip of PF, CE, CNX, and SOP. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.